Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new edition of Graveyard Talk. This is a big one. Oh, you're going to love this one. I got my, my good friend Sam here from the band The Screaming Dead. Yes, classic, beautiful rock punk. Oh, it just brings me back to good old memories of when I was fun when I was a kid. And it said this gray old fart you see in front of you. Sam, thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. How are you? I'm fine, Rob. Thank you for uh, inviting us on the show. Oh, the honor is all mine. Trust me. Uh, I, I love you guys. I think the band's fantastic and, and just classic. Uh, you're one of the bands that I go back to when I want to relive my youth again, uh, because you guys were right in. I grew up with the with the punk scene, even though I was here in America. It wasn't not, the punk scene was nothing like over there in England. I, I realized that. And, and all but uh yeah that's that's the stuff i kind of grew up on and uh you know so i, I love the sound uh, of you guys and all so let, let, let's talk about let's get to the history of, of the band i gotta ask why the name screaming dead uh the screaming dead were uh basically um it was a kind of thing where all the bands were pretty shit back in the day you know oh. after the uh advent of the first uh punk genre of the sex pistols the clash mm -hmm. now basically a bunch of us teenagers um that formed the band decided to become um uh, a theme of horror we actually wanted to be dark mm -hmm. uh, no one else was doing that at the time we just wanted to be different because the original punk bands were all different and because we all had a lovely horror theme going through our veins mm -hmm. we decided the screaming dead were going to be completely different to all this bloody political bollocks that we were listening to and it was just doing our heads in so fucking hell so we became uh, a horror punk band we actually coined the phrase rob mm -hmm. we called ourselves horror punk before anyone else did nice nice see classic your history your, your music history i love that it's fantastic um i i have to ask uh since there wasn't that like you said not that much in, in the realm of horror or punk and all uh at first how was the band taken did, did people get into it immediately or did they kind of have to warm up to it or anything like that uh in the uk um mm -hmm. basically people wearing uh uh dr martins uh they were looking scruffy they'd lost their glam punk image but we um started wearing dinner jackets uh white leather jackets winkle picker boots leather trousers we were giving a bit of uh glam rock back to punk yeah and it uh kicked ass people were like wow look at them they look so different Mm -hmm. You know, they look so different to the rest of us. So it's a bit like, you know, uh, original punk back in the day, hitting people for the first time. A lot of people saw us and they were going, wow, you guys look fantastic. We were wearing makeup. I mean, we weren't really doing anything different in the way we looked, mm -hmm. I suppose, from the very early punk rock look, you know, a bit like the uh, New York Dolls or maybe you know, the Sex Pistols or the Clash, but we just want a uh, Generation X were a big influence on us in the way they looked, not musically, but the way they looked. Right, right. Yeah, and for people that don't know that, and if they, they don't know this, shame on them, but Generation X is the band that Billy Idol came from. So not everybody knows that over here in America. It's terrible, terrible over here with the music knowledge of, of the stuff that I think is great. So... Uh, you you kind of got into uh, the next question I wanted to ask you, and that was uh, influences. What what made you go in the, this direction? Uh, did you have any musical influences that you just said, I, I, I love these bands, but I want to be different? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, the band that influenced every uh, person that wanted to be in a punk band mm -hmm. in the UK were the Sex Pistols. Anyone who says otherwise are uh, actually lying, you know. Sex Pistols uh, created the whole look. They looked just so fantastic. Johnny Rotten looked better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, they just looked absolutely amazing back in... So they were they were calling to arms. And it was just like all the original punk bands all sounded 
look different. The Clash look different to the Pistols. Uh, going back to Gen X again, Generation X, they look completely different to everybody else. X-Ray Specs, Susie and the Banshees. Everybody just looked different. The Buzzcocks, they all sounded different. They all looked different, Rob. It was as simple as that. And the Screaming Dead was just an extension of that re reality that we just wanted to be different. Okay. Yeah, that's that's great. I like that. I always like inv individuality. So it's it's very easy to be cookie cutter, but to take that extra step and be original, that's the tough part, I think, in music. And and also, I think that's fantastic that you did that. Um, I have to admit, I'm, I'll, I'll I'll show you how well I know you, but I know that the first single you had was Valley of the Dead, and I really love that song a lot. Now that that you did. You didn't have a you didn't have a record con uh, company contract with that song yet, did you? That was all you guys, right? No, what we did, we took out a loan of uh, at the time, which was quite expensive. It was a thousand uh, would be a thousand dollars, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, by today's standards, because the uh, pound has fallen so much against the dollar, mm -hmm. and uh, we borrowed that money. It was a lot, so we brought out a thousand singles, and uh, we sold them out within one week. But we'd already built up a really good cult following. Mm -hmm. But it was just the way, I mean, we, the way we looked was completely different. But that song was just as punk as punk as you can get. Yes. It was done on an eight-track recorder in our hometown by the uh, the engineer. was the engineer who um, was Killing Joke's engineer. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so we just used that eight-track back on one, two, three, four, done one two three four done all done in a day in a mobile studio studio it was a bit of a a bit of a bloody kind of disaster but it worked if you like rob and then um no future records uh took it up immediately and decided to sign us straight away and it sold thousands of copies but yeah i mean i think the whole look and the first single the whole look the way we look just typified the look of the band, the way we are and everything like that, you know. Right. It was, uh, there we were, you know, playing really good punk rock music, but looking like a bunch of uh, glam punk rockers, you know. We did a jacket, <laughs> winkle pickers, leather trousers. That was our portrayal you go. of the music. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I watch the old videos and it's like, yeah, you guys had your own look, which I, I really... Like I said before, I love individuality, and that's what you guys had, and, and I think that's fantastic. But um, yeah, I, I love the first single, uh, and then once uh, No Future picked you guys up, yeah, I think uh, Night Creatures was the next one, and that actually went to number twenty-two in the charts in, in the UK, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yes, yeah. what it was, it was a twelve-inch mm -hmm. um, single. Mm -hmm. We went to Bristol to record it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just something totally off the wall. I actually only went down on the day that the rest of the band had put the uh, tracks down. Mm -hmm. And I just sang straight over the top of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it just came together. I'm not saying that I was great, but that what they laid down, the rest of the band, was absolutely phenomenal, Rob. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just blew people away because it was just different to everything else that anyone had ever heard. We didn't set out our mantle to go, wow, we're going to do something completely different. Mm -hmm. We were just heading in a direction that um, that I'd, I don't think people were, were actually doing at the time. You know, we it wasn't set out to be. We didn't go, wow, we're going to do something different. Mm -hmm. We were just already beginning to move in a direction that no one else had. Unwittingly, mm -hmm. Rob, yeah. unwittingly. Yeah. But look how well it worked out. So it was perfect. It was meant to be. That's how I look at it. So uh, I, I do want to talk about one more song from back in the past real quick before we, we, we move on. I got to admit, it's the best version of Paint It Black I've ever heard. I love that version of Paint It Black that you guys do. I think that's fantastic. Um, I, I, love, I love that. Uh, that if, I, if I understand right, that was a tribute song, the right for Brian Jones from the Stones? Brian right? Jones is Brian Jones is buried in our town. He was from mm -hmm. Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. He's uh, buried here. Um, he was only 27. He was in the 27 mm -hmm. Club. Mm -hmm. uh, 
we had a little bit of thing about the Rolling Stones, their flamboyancy, their um, their look. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they kind of actually looked really cool, didn't they, in the late 60s, early 70s, I think. Probably, I think they're being exposed now as not really, mm, as you could say, a working class band, whatever. But they were a very talented band. They were a great band. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brian Jones, I suppose he's one of our own. And uh, so we did it as a kind of tribute. And it's a bloody morbid song, which suited our genre of music, Rob, completely. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. It was meant to be. I like that. Yeah, just an amazing version of it. Uh and uh, I wanted I wanted to talk about the history of the band a little bit, and and you know we've talked to the old the the the, the older news of the band, uh, the the breakup in '85 was it just because punk was phasing itself out? It was that basically the main reason why the this was this happened. Rob, absolutely, completely. The venues were closing down. Mm-hmm. It was the advent of the uppie era. Mm-hmm. you know, which had been led by the American thing, I suppose, with Ronald Reagan, a mm. um, uh, politician in the UK called Margaret Thatcher, yes. uh, started to change things in this country. Mm-hmm. It, we have been the alternative culture was the biggest thing in the UK up until that point, and it just became ruined. Um, it was just became absolutely shit so there just seemed no point in carrying on we should have carried on rob Mm -hmm. you know we should have just carried on playing i think you know we were offered uh loads of record deals Mm -hmm. um the band themselves were going through a bit of individual term turmoil within each other with relationships and it was just tony was the one that wanted to carry on in his eternal credit Mm -hmm. i kind of feel like i let him down mal went to london uh, Mark wanted to get married. It was it was a weird scenario, mm-hmm. but it was just the way it was, Rob. I mean, it was just like I felt lost. We all felt lost. It mm-hmm. was like a divorce when it happened. Sure. At the first time, it felt like a relief. It's like God, it's over. Thank God. Then mm-hmm. it felt complete. We were completely lost as individuals, and that's the truth. Wow. Wow. Uh, I, I have to ask because I know the band didn't get back together again until '97. Why, why did it take that long? Just, just because everybody was going their own, their own direction at that time, or was there something? Well, wrong? Basically, Rob is uh, Tony mm-hmm. um, kind of wanted to get us. He actually said, "Do you want to do something?" Mm-hmm. Or we were like, mm, "Okay," and he said, "Let's do it before we get too old." Mm-hmm. And uh, let's give it a go, and let's go abroad, and let's um, let's we're in demand, and blah blah blah. We didn't have the uh, original drummer, so we did this electronic stuff, mm-hmm. and it kind it did kind of work. It did kind of work. I preferred to play with the drummer than not with, but it was me, Mal and Tony that actually. Um, actually decided to go for it again and that's why we did it just to uh, do a couple of tours of germany mm-hmm. and um just see how it went really but uh you know that's how it went uh, okay and and is is that it did it do its time i mean it was only what for two years right by 99 it was over with again is it was it just not what you expect it to be, or, or or did something else happen there that stopped it after only two yeah. years? Yeah, I t- I totally knew it was going to be short lived because oh, um okay. because Tony wanted to, uh, was doing his own thing with his own band, mm-hmm. you know, and you couldn't expect him. He was uh, playing with a band called Incubus Succubus with his mm-hmm. wife, mm-hmm. so he couldn't really rejoin properly with the screen dead it was his idea to get us back together mm-hmm. and me and mal went along with it but it it um it, it was only supposed to be a very short lived project you know at the time so you know it it, it was just the way it was yeah, Bobby, yeah. just the way it was right. you know i'd have liked to have continued it we did some great gigs we played some brilliant places and we had a phenomenal thing but i always felt uncomfortable with the drum machine to be honest i didn't yeah. think we were doing the screaming dead justice at all 
Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes absolute sense to me. Well, let's get to that the happier news then. And that's the, the wonderful time that, that you guys, 2014, you got back and still going strong since 2014. What brought about the 2014 reunion? Well, basically, there was um, a tribute band called the Sex Pistols Experience. Mm-hmm. And they're very much like the original Sex Pistols. And we're all... I've got to be honest, we were all very big Sex Pistols fans, even though we sound nothing like them. Right. And um, uh, we just thought, wouldn't it be fun to support this band that we're playing in Cheltenham, you know, as a tribute, you know, as a thing that that's what we were all into. Mm-hmm. So we'd actually go and play with these guys. And uh, it went so well. But Tony decided he wouldn't do it. So we asked our uh, one of our best friends, Mazzy, Pete Maslag, that had um, been trained by Worsley in Motorhead. Um, and, he, and I'd met him 40 years ago, and he was a really good friend of ours anyway, and nearly joined the band. We went, well, if he can't do it, we'll ask Mazzy. We went down so well, we just thought, sod it, let's keep going. To this day, here we are. Nice. I like that. Still going. Very cool. Very cool. Well, let, let's talk about the new album that's coming out. That uh, Ride with the Dead uh, is coming out soon, right? Yes, Rob. New, new album. And, uh, you've heard it, haven't you? I've heard uh, a couple of tracks from it. They both sound amazing. I heard, uh, you know, God of Love is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, so I really love that. And uh, Screaming Dead I've heard as well. And that's really, really good as well. So it's, it's a um, great sound. It's it's probably the best. Well, this is what the Screaming Dead play like now. Mm-hmm. You know, we just play like this funk. Well, I can't say. I mean, it's up to people to judge. But, you know, since we got back together in that era, we've gone all over the world. New York, Philadelphia, my God. Montreal, Vancouver, Berlin a couple of times. Mexico City, Day of the Dead festivals. Mm-hmm. Costa Rica. Oh, God, I, I can't even begin to explain where we've actually been. Mm-hmm. And uh, everywhere we go, it's like bedlam, it's mayhem. Um, but we are a very, very tight band. We can deliver, Rob, we can play. You know, we can. I mean, San Diego, God, like Los Angeles a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Jesus, I can't, I can't even begin to think mm-hmm. where, where we've been. Right, you know, but it's just, uh, yeah, this new album is spectacular. I'll send it you. Oh, I would love that. Thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I would. I will send it you, Rob. How do I send it you? I'll I'll, I'll let you know after the show. How's that? We got. We. I'll send it you. I'll (laughs) send it you so you can play it all the time. You're going to be. You're going to be blown away. I mean, I don't know if you know the band Rubella Ballet. Sid True Love, he's a really good friend of ours. He also drummed for X Ray Specs. He's blown away with the album. He's just loving it. Every everywhere's loving it, you know. And I'm absolutely delighted with that. Or oh, we all are as a band. We're absolutely chuffed to bits to uh that people like it. Because that's what it's all about, really. It's not about us, it's what people's reaction is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and it's an it's an amazing sound and all, but there's still the it's it's like you said, it's a newer sound. It's an update sound, dated sound, but there's still hints of the past in it as well, which I'm glad to hear. I wanted to have that, the old uh, feel to it uh, as well. But uh, the, the new album, is there, is there like any, uh, is there a, a theme for it? Or are we just going out and, and rocking everyone off with, with great songs? Well, it, I mean, Yes, Rob, it is. I mean, the whole album is called Ride with the Dead because it mm-hmm. is a ride with the dead. You know, there's old songs that we've remastered. There's new songs. And we, we just, I think we're kicking ass with this. Yeah. We're, I mean, Pete Newdeck, who, um, who did it, mm-hmm. he's worked with Black Sabbath. Not that we're into metal. And Judas Priest, he's very much in in demand producer. He's phenomenal. Nice. He's basically like the fifth Screaming Dead member, like George Martin was the fifth Beatle. Nice. He's uh, he's done something very special here. But he said, I mean, he worked our asses off here, Rob. He worked our butts off with this album. You know, it was like stop 
not good enough, stop, not oh. good enough, stop. Wow. It's essentially us, but essentially him as well. Wow. Wow. Met business, apparently. Wow. Okay. Yikes. Uh, yeah. Well, like I said, what I've heard sounds amazing. Uh, you know, I like it. I, the newer stuff you've had, I think is great. I love uh, 20th Century Vampire. I love that song, too. And it's got, there's just that great, again, updated sound. Hints of the past, and I really like that—that that you didn't just stray completely away from from your past, you know. And that's what I really appreciated about this and all. But uh, but yeah, what I've heard from the new album is is quite spectacular, actually. Um, are you guys gonna? Uh, I know you have a bunch of uh, tour dates for this record. Are you going all over the world for this album? Yeah, we're um, our first gig. Mm -hmm. We're playing the Undercover Festival in a place called Guildford in England. Okay. Um, with member ex members of uh, Stiff Little Fingers, not my favourite band, you know. I mean, we can stand alone. I mean, not not bands, but we can um, we can do our own thing. We're looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. uh, then we've just got so many gigs. I mean, we're supposed to be in Canada at the end of March, but um, all depending on visas. But we're definitely in California in October. Mm -hmm. But just countless gigs all over the UK. Nice. Uh, nice. Before that, Rob. So just promoting mm -hmm. it, just keeping rocking. You know, I mean, last year was phenomenal. We did, we did Costa Rica, we did Los Angeles, we did, we did Mexico City, the Day of the Dead Festival. Mm -hmm. We did Poland. We did yep. Berlin as well. I mean. Absolutely phenomenal gigs. And we're at the biggest fest, punk festival in the world in uh, August. That's the Rebellion Festival. Oh, uh, where's that one? That's in, that's in a shithole of a place called Blackpool. But but it is but it, Henry Rollins has just been confirmed. Oh. So, nice. yeah, we're there with New Model Army on the same day as us. Nice, nice. So, yeah, I mean, that is the festival to be at. Uh, we've been trying to get that for a long time. We're, I mean, it's a bit of a dilemma, Rob, for the Screaming Dead. Are we a punk rock band or are we a gothic rock band or are we a death rock band? Right. I, like to, I actually like to think we're death rock. You know, a phenomenon that never happened in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's the dark side of punk, and that sums up the Screaming Dead Totally. We have a lot of arguments with uh, new Misfits fans when we say to them that we were the band that coined the phrase horror punk, which we did. Mm -hmm. We're not claiming that we were the first horror punk band, but we're the first band that said that we use that phrase. Nice. And that is fact. There you go. Nice. Uh why do I, I got to ask this question since you were in the middle of the of that movement and all? Why do you think punk didn't do nearly as well in America as it did in the UK? I'm not really sure. I mean, America had some phenomenal punk bands. I mean, the best punk band I ever saw, and I will be honest with you, 1978, mm -hmm. Birmingham Odeon, the Ramones. Oh, April okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Fucking, they blew my absolute brains out. nice they were just absolutely you know and when the screen dead play we go one song into another into mm -hmm. another into another into another mm -hmm. you know this is the whole essence of the screen dead and that is nicked a little bit from the ramones style i guess mm -hmm. um i don't know i i i don't know why punk didn't i mean america has given everybody phenomenal people like iggy pop you know, black flag. I I I can't really say. I mean, I can't. I don't really want to talk about bands like Blink One Eight, whatever they are, or mm. Green Day. I I think they're just pop acts. Mm -hmm. But uh, blonde people like that were absolutely exceptional. Um, blimey, you know, television, uh, the Cramps, fucking yeah. hell, you know. I mean, America's given the. Uh, Stooges, MC5s I mean, crikey, these were huge influences on everybody in the UK, the New York Dolls um, I, I can't say why punk rock never, I don't know if it happened in America or not, I really really don't, I think right. I think America's so diverse I think, you know, I don't really know, you'll have to tell me that 
scroll. Okay, I will. I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I I embraced it fully uh, way back you know when it when it came out and all. That's what I grew up listening to, and you know I got some looks and some you know odd looks and and comments made at me, but I didn't really care uh, about that. But yeah, I always had wondered about that. You know why the, the punk movement didn't do nearly as well uh, uh, here in America uh, than it did in, in England. Thank thank God it, it lived there. I love the fact that you're keeping the punk alive. That that's a good thing, and uh, I hope I hope it never fades away because I don't want that to ever happen. Um, so, but uh, okay. So uh, the new album, when is that coming out? Do we have a date yet for it? it or is it, it's not out yet, right? No. Okay. No, no, mm -hmm. it's not out. I mean, okay. we're, we're looking at trying to get a launch date. We might have some. Um, I mean, Bommel Records in Germany are going to bring it out on vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, return to the Back Cave. We're going to bring out CDs. We're going to do our own CDs. It's going to be a three pronged attack. Okay. It's already been played on a load of our radio stations, Rob. You know, it's been played in Canada, loads of Californian stations. But you know, these are cult, um, cult listening stations. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not like mainstream, but I mean, it's getting great reviews and, and we're loving it. We're Good. absolutely loving that. It is a phenomenal album. And as I say, Rob, well, after the show, we'll talk and I'll send you the files and you're just going to, you're just going to be playing it. I know. And you won't stop playing it. So. Yes. Are you count on that? I have no, no doubt about that whatsoever. Uh, so, all right, well, uh, I'm going to, Stop taking up your time here. It's much later over there than it is here. So, uh, but I love the fact that I got to talk to you. This has been an absolute honor and pleasure to be able to talk to you. And uh, you know, uh, keep keep me informed. Let me know what all is going on with you, you guys, and and all. And uh, you know, let me know. We'll and we'll push the album uh, when it comes out. We'll I'll push it on our page, my page, and and all. And we'll do as much uh, promoting as I can for you. Uh, and all, but this has been an absolute pleasure, and I really do appreciate thank you taking you, your Rob. time. No, thank, thank you. you. You've been brilliant. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, sir. I really do appreciate it. Yes. Okay, Rob. Yes, sir. So all good. All right. And uh, so thank you, good sir. I appreciate that. Like I said, and thank you everyone for watching the show. Appreciate it. And the numbers keep going up. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. We're starting to make a move now. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching. We'll have some new shows for you next week. Thanks everyone. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.